Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the Sidereal Vedic Astrology Outlook for the month of September. Now what's the big news in September? Well we are going to have Jupiter retrograde that's from the 5th of September to the 31st of December this year. So as you can see it's quite a long retrograde. Jupiter will be dipping back to about the 11 degree 23 minutes of arc mark. Uh, so Jupiter is going to be covering the same ground that he has covered from 11th June up until 5th September. Okay so when I do the mini readings for everyone this month have a think back to 11th June but we'll cover that uh, when I'm going through that for absolutely everyone. I'll just make a note here 11th June so that when I get into those notes I know it's 11th June. Um, but yeah Jupiter is going to be covering that same ground that he has already covered. So think back to 11 June and what the time has been like for you. I know for me things when I look back to 11 June things have been pretty quiet actually for me and just kind of slow and not much going on and you know and I have been feeling a little bit tired and run down at times so yeah I think that could be connected in with Jupiter as I've been having a look today I can see that some of that makes sense. Now Rahu is going to end the conjunction it's been in with Jupiter on the 29th of November. I will cover that in a separate breakout video. We've got though so Jupiter is in Aries and Jupiter is getting ready to enter Taurus. Now Taurus is the sign that is all about big money, big wealth, you know banking, stability, savings, money definitely Taurus right. So Jupiter is getting ready to enter Taurus and that's going to happen on the 2nd of May 2024. Jupiter will be in Taurus from the 2nd of May 2024 to the 15th of May 2025 and that's really quite significant because when I look at the world and the collective and what's going on at the moment it's really interesting that we've got this central banking digital currency coming out in the world and I do believe in Australia they are testing it. I think it's even now. They've got a few cashless branches of the Commonwealth Bank in Sydney Australia. They are trying it at the moment and it feels like they're using this time now. Now what do we have going on now? We've got Venus in retrograde and that's really incredible that the launch of these branches is happening when Venus is in retrograde. I find that to be pretty incredible because Venus of course lords Taurus and Taurus is as I said big money, stability, banking, all that kind of thing. Uh, and then we've got Venus lording Libra, Libra which of course you know original seventh house foreign marketplace, business, all that kind of thing. So it's pretty amazing that this CBDC is being launched while Venus is in retrograde and I do think that the elites are kind of trying it out in Australia. They're testing it and they're getting ready to launch it in other parts of the world and I really do think that it's when Jupiter enters Taurus that this could be a bigger thing in our world. This could really be uh, they could yeah start to launch this in you know major major parts of the world. Um, it's really interesting that they are trialing this here in it, well I just said here in Australia. I'm not in Australia I'm in England right now. I get confused now and then sorry. Also I could just hear there was a really I don't know if that came up on the recording a very loud noise next door. We shall find out. I get thrown by loud noises sometimes. Anyway um, let's take a look. So yeah they want to roll out their CBDC in other countries. I do think April, May 2024 we're going to see them roll this out in other countries and they're just trialing it in Australia for now. I talked about things happening where there could be interesting movements in the world. Uh, so Rahu Jupiter, my Rahu Jupiter video if for those of you who missed that you can take a look I'll put a link above you'll be able to have a look at what I said there but one of the things 
that I'm going to say about this particular conjunction is that when Rahu Jupiter is together in the sky, it can be that you know very wise things happen Rahu is an extreme and Jupiter is very wise so it can be that very wise things happen uh, but equally it can be that very foolish things happen as well um, and I've got here this is one of those things leadership think they are being very wise but they are only being wise for themselves and I kind of tend to think that they are accelerating their own demise like you know that, that's that's what I tend to think. They're accelerating awakening. They're going to accelerate people protesting and saying, no, we've got Saturn in Aquarius. Okay, and we're going to have Saturn in Aquarius until March 2025. Okay, and what did I say? I said Jupiter's going to enter Taurus May, 15th May 2025. It's really interesting Jupiter in Taurus will escape Saturn's third aspect until 30th March 2025 when Saturn will step into Pisces. So it is interesting for a chunk of time Jupiter will actually be escaping Saturn's third aspect and that's really significant because we might be trying to protest but when Jupiter leaves, and I'll find out exactly when uh, does, I think it's from 2nd May 2024 up until 30 March 2025. I, I'll, I'll put it on the screen if it's something different, but I'm pretty sure that's the duration. 2nd May 2024 to 30 March 2025. That could be a time where we might protest a lot, but they actually it doesn't deter them uh, they you know will actually be able to achieve some of what they want to achieve that is a possibility here but I really I, I've got the note here I believe people will fight back or not warm to this new new technology I really do I, I think people are not going to stand for it I think people are definitely going to protest and push back I, I don't see that this is going to be, I see that a CBDC type thing can happen, but I don't think everyone's going to pick it up at all. And I don't see it replacing cash. I don't see that they'll be able to get rid of cash. I just don't see that that's going to work. Um, I use cash here. I do use uh, the plastic debit card I use that but I don't use my phone I'll show you I've got a really old I've got I keep an old phone I've got a, an iPhone 8 uh, it is not a new phone I keep an old phone deliberately because I don't use the phone very much and the other thing is I don't want to have a nice flashy new phone that people want to pinch or any of that you know that's that's an issue here in London people are pinching phones I, I keep hearing about it um, so that's that's a bit of an issue some people pay for things with their phone I never do that I never have any payment information or any of that on my phone I just don't do that so I, I, I use a plastic card sometimes because I don't want to carry too much cash either I don't think that's the most safe and responsible thing either so yeah it's interesting I don't think they're going to be able to completely do away with cash I really don't um, yeah and I'll, I'll just give you an example of why I think that that's not going to be possible see in Australia they might be able to in Australia they might be able to uh, implement things there because a lot of the systems there are quite new the infrastructure is quite new and quite slick there but here in the United Kingdom, I'll give you an example. Just recently, I wanted to update an address with a government department. Very simple task. I made something like six phone calls to this department. They gave me two different websites where I could try to update the address. Every time I tried, it never worked. And in the end, they said, they pointed me to a link that had a paper form, which I needed to print out. I needed to handwrite it. And when I mailed off that print, printed form, there was a human who looked at it and then they 
did change the address. So look at that, you know, I mean, I just wanted to change a simple address. Two computer systems that they were running couldn't be done. It needed a paper form and a human being. And I think there are lots and lots of legacy systems and things like that in the back end of these large organizations that just aren't up to date. They aren't up to speed. I remember when I was a young person, I, I did a, a technology degree. This was a very long time ago. And I did a six month stint working at EDS. I actually saw um, EDS were the consultants for the Commonwealth Bank in Australia. And I actually worked with a guy from Bain and Company and he showed me how he mapped the entire uh, technology infrastructure for the Commonwealth Bank. And it was a giant map on a giant wall in a boardroom at EDS. And I remember helping him with some stuff. And, you know, I mean, I was just a university. I was on a trainee placement and I was redesigning the intranet. So it was not, um, you know, I, di I didn't have anything to do with that big project. But I remember spending time with that guy and him explaining to me how he did what he did. And it was fascinating. And what I found really fascinating about that map, and obviously, I mean, that was a long time ago. So the Commonwealth Bank would have had a lot of legacy systems back then. But I remember back then being really surprised as to how many legacy systems there were and how things are not as slick as we the customer perceives or, or gets to see when you when you look at the back end of a lot of these uh, technology systems there are still a lot of legacy things that need to be updated i don't know what the case is now i haven't worked in technology for a very 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 long time so i i'm not sure but just that experience i had here of wanting to update a couple of addresses and what was required was you know a, a paper form and a human being. I think some of what the elite are doing, I think they're a bit into fantasy thinking. And I think half of the stuff that they want to do isn't really going to fly in the real world. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but if, but I do think that they have got, as I say, I think from the 2nd of May 2024 to about the 30th of March 2025, they've got quite a good chance of implementing a lot of stuff. You know, um, Jupiter is going to escape Saturn's third aspect. We might protest, but they might materialize a lot of things potentially during that time. Uh, I'm not sure, but any which way, I'm not going to be participating. I'm not going to be using my hand to pay for things or no way. I don't even use my phone to do any of that stuff anyway. So anyway. Guys, let's take a look uh, at, what are we gonna take a look at today? We're gonna take a look at Jupiter. How about we do that? Is anyone gonna join me for the whole thing? By the way, my outfit today is sort of Jupiter related. This is, this is like brown, Jupiter, we can wear brown. And this is a yellow scarf, but I don't know if it's appearing on the screen as being yellow. Anyway, it is. So I've got, I've got the Jupiter colors as best as I can. Um, oh, the other thing, guys, I am going to do, I'm going to do a little breakout video for the 31st of August blue moon. We are going to have a blue moon special episode. So stay tuned for that. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go through the entire zodiac. So anyone who wants to join me, I want to thank as well. Last time we had, I think it was it last time or the time before, I can't remember. Somebody spotted a mistake. Thank you so much for that. It was a huge mistake. It ended up you know, causing a problem in several signs. This time I have done my due diligence. I have double checked everything again. It should be okay. But if you spot a mistake, please do let me know. I really, really appreciate it. It's so good to know, but I think, I think we're okay this time. All right, let's take a look. Aries, so welcome Aries. Aries, thank you so much for joining. This is Aries, Ascendant, Aries Moon, or Aries Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now Aries, Jupiter is going to retrograde in your sign. That's from the 5th of September to the end of December in your first house. So you might really feel this one, Aries. And Jupiter is a benefic for you. So what you want to be looking out for is that now Jupiter's been there for quite a while. Okay. 
Uh, and there's quite a little while yet for, for Jupiter to go. But one thing that Jupiter has been working with you is that he has been expanding your leadership capabilities. He's been helping you to be more seen. Okay, so helping you to be more you, be more seen. If this hasn't been the case, Saturn has been aspecting Jupiter. Um, and, and, and what Saturn's aspect might have done is help structure your life so that you are more seen or more in charge or, you know, you, you are on the playing field of life here with Jupiter in your first house in your signs. That's Kendra, right? So you're on the playing field of life. And especially if Jupiter is four places away from natal Jupiter, I would imagine that this should be a time of promotion for you or you should be going up in life. Rahu could have been expanding your desire to do more in life at this time. And the fifth and ninth house aspects have both been encouraging you to learn more, to skill up or to teach what you know. Okay, so this Jupiter movement, if you want to think back to about the 11th of June and think, okay, what ground did I cover in this context of leadership or being more seen or being, being more busy possibly, this might have made you more busy as well. If you feel like it hasn't been like that, Saturn has been casting aspect. So Saturn's trying to help out here and but when Saturn casts his aspect it can bring up blocks it can bring up limitations so and that's for you to recognize and to transcend to go above the limitation somehow or to see it f that it's an illusion and that that's an illusion I can do this and to keep going anyway that's your job you got it when you see the block when you see the illusion you've got to recognize it and go that's not me I can do this right so if you've had blockages limitations coming up then observe them become aware your understanding will grow jupiter's in a fiery place here there's more visibility so you'll be able to see and understand more but see the blockage and move beyond it now on the 15th of September, we have a new moon in Leo, Uttra Falguni Nakshatra in your fifth house. So this is a great time to wish for either a child to be born if you're looking to get pregnant uh, or for new creative ideas or to be inspired. You want that spark of life. You, you want to feel lit again. You know, you want, you want some fire in your life, wish for that. You want some romance in your life, wish for that. This is fifth house, you can definitely wish for that. Just with the wishing for a new child thing, know that you're a bit more fertile at this time possibly. So if you're trying for a baby, it's good to know that. Equally, if you don't wanna do that, it's good to know that as well. Um, now on the 29th of September, there's a full moon in Pisces, Uttra Bhadrapada Nakshatra, happening in your 12th house. So on this full moon, this could be a time where you observe the limits of your own spiritual growth. And this is just a thing of observation. Just observe, just recognize where are you limited when you try to grow spiritually? What is that limit that you are coming up against? If you become aware of it, you can then easily transcend that or more easily transcend it when you know what it is. Aries, I'm liking the look of the energy here for you. See how Jupiter continues to help you be more seen or structure your life in such a way that you are more, more engaged in life. And yeah, I, I wish you a good Jupiter retrograde. Thank you for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Taurus Ascendant, Taurus Moon, or Taurus Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now we've got Jupiter retrograding in Aries from the 5th of September to the end of December in your 12th house. Now Jupiter is not 
the most um, comfortable energy for you. It's, it's certainly not a benefic. I've got the note here that it is a malefic energy, but is that something to be worried about? No, it's not. Malefic energy it just means it's, it's kind of not the most compatible uh, of energies for your sign. But still, Jupiter's function is to expand you. Okay, and Jupiter has been trying to expand you spiritually. So, but the other thing is that you've also got Jupiter in the 12th house. This is a large planet in a watery place for you. So if you've been feeling drained or tired, this could be the reason why. If you could feel that life is really slow, why aren't things happening for me? What is going on? If you're feeling any of those things, it really could be down to Jupiter. And one of the things that I'm seeing here is because Jupiter is in your 12th house, Jupiter could be behind the scenes really working with your spiritual team a lot. And sometimes I feel like that when my life gets quiet and boring and I think, what the heck's going on? But I know that there's a lot happening behind the scenes and it's my job to be on this side and to be patient and to just wait and skill up or read books or look after my health or, or that kind of thing. So that might be you as well. Now Jupiter's fifth aspect into your fourth house of home may have kept your focus more at home or your attention more at home or you might be dealing with your mother quite a bit. A uh, relationship with mother might be more demanding at this time. Jupiter's ninth aspect into your eighth house of occult and hidden things may have been growing you spiritually behind the scenes as well. You've got definitely 12th house and the eighth house aspect it's kind of like you are being spiritually grown at this time and maybe that's why things aren't happening as much in your life of course it does depend on your other placements and what you've got going on elsewhere but this could be one of the reasons why um, the other thing is that if you've had breakages in your career or times when you're just not that busy or you know, you and you might have due to Jupiter. Remember, Jupiter's been in Aries for quite a while. So if you've had a couple of breaks in your career or transitioning jobs or, you know, that kind of thing, that this could be why. Or if you just haven't had many clients and that kind of thing, this could be why. It's because of Jupiter. Uh, now, 15th September, new moon in Leo. With Drafelgun, so you might be wondering when, how long am I going to feel this for? I mean, Jupiter's retrogrades fifth September to end of December. September could, if, if from June eleventh to now has been quiet or draining or tiring, your September might be kind of a bit similar. But don't worry, things will shift, and there are other planetary movements going on as well. So, so don't worry too much. Um, things will shift. Now 15 September there's a new moon in Leo Uttara Falguni Nakshatra in your fourth house. It's a great time to wish for improvements to your home or a new place to live as well, your dream house or dream place to live. And on the 29th of September there is a full moon in Pisces Uttara Bhadrapada Nakshatra happening in your 11th house. So this could shine a light on limits in some of your friendships uh, or within your network circle or maybe and I mean maybe you've been trying to grow things or expand things that's been difficult lately on the 29th of September this full moon might provide you with some answers you might get some visibility you might get some aha moments you might be able to see why there have been some limitations uh, in your life lately and when you see the limitation then you understand it and you can know that that's not me and you can rise above it or you can move forward or you you could move forward anyway it's it's that kind of thing Taurus you got a lot going on spiritually you're growing leaps and bounds so keep going keep being amazing and we are now going to welcome Gemini Gemini, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Gemini Ascendant, Gemini Moon, or Gemini Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So now we've got Jupiter retrograde in Aries from the 5th of September to the end of December in your 11th house. Now Jupiter is a malefic energy for you. Is that a bad thing? 
no it's not a bad thing at all Jupiter is gonna expand things for you but when he does so it might be that blockages come up or challenges arise and things like that but that's actually a good thing you actually want that because when you encounter the blockage the idea is just understand it see it for what it is and then move around it move beyond it ascend go up you know do what you have to do to get out of the way of the blockage and to keep being you recognize that the blockage isn't you you are infinite you are grand you are you are the sun you know and and just see the clouds and recognize that i'm not a cloud i'm the sun recognize that wherever the sun is in your chart you know that's you that's who you really are so let's take a look at what Jupiter has been doing for you in your life. So for many months, for a while, let's have a look since when. I do just quickly want to have a look since when because let's have a look here. So since about mid, mid to end of April this year, you've been working with Jupiter in this area and Jupiter has been expanding how you accommodate new opportunities in your life. Jupiter's fifth aspect into your third house has been expanding your confidence. And Jupiter's ninth aspect into your seventh house has been expanding how you relate to other people. So if blockages have been coming up in these areas, now you know why. Because Jupiter's been moving through, it's a really large body that's been moving through this area, Saturn has been casting aspect. So we've got a bit of testing energy here as well. Jupiter is a malefic for your sign, so you might have been having blockages uh, being raised when it comes to bringing in new opportunities, having the confidence to deal with them, and how you relate to other people. But this is actually brilliant, okay? When we have the blockages come up, that's actually really good because that is our work here on this earth. We are meant to. Uh, you know pursue why do we pursue a goal we pursue a goal so that we bring up all the blockages on the way there because our job is really to clear those so how do we clear a blockage we see it for what it is and we recognize that that's not me I am actually you know a loving being I am infinite I am you know and you think of all the spiritual qualities you think of your son those are all the things that you truly are so you're not the clouds you're the sun so see the blockages that they are clouds and shine anyway really that's that's the big thing here now on the 15th of september the other thing you can do by the way is have a look back to june 11th june and whatever you we're, we're covering the same old ground from 11 june to 5th september we're just doing that again from 5th September to end of December. Okay, so that's another thing to bear in mind there. Now on the 15th of September, we've got a new moon in Leo Uttara Falguni Nakshatra happening in your third house. This is a great time to wish for more of your soul tribe people to come in. Okay, to wish for new friends, wish for new fun times with the friends that you have. Wish to go out more and be social. Uh, and have some really good times and on the 29th of September there is a full moon in Pisces Uttra Bhadrapada Nakshatra happening in your 10th house so any limitations at work could be more visible at this time and that is really good because when you become aware of okay what are the limitations at work that's a good thing just to see that, just to see and observe. On this, the 29th of September, you could just be getting more information about what's blocking you at your work. But Gemini, you've got some pretty interesting energies here and there are energies that, you know, as I say, um, could be showing you where the blockages are, for example, in your confidence or how you relate to others or or how you take on board new opportunities and even with that full moon energy limitations at work could be more visible at this time as well so yeah it's a, it's a bit of a busy time for you Gemini in that but this is all good because it's all giving you a lot of important information that you can use to transcend and go beyond 
I'm wishing you well, Gemini. Take care. And we are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Cancer Ascendant, Cancer Moon, or Cancer Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now, Jupiter is retrograde in Aries from the 5th of September to the end of December in your 10th house. So that retrograde period means Jupiter is going to cover old ground. Now, what is the old ground? The old ground is from about 11 June to 5th September. So if you think back to 11 June to 5th September, what is the ground that you covered there? We're going to be covering that again. Now, for you, Jupiter is a benefic energy and Jupiter has been expanding your career at this time. Okay, now if your Jupiter is four places away from natal Jupiter, you might even be getting a promotion, you might be going up in the world, it could be really good. Jupiter's fifth aspect into your second house has been expanding your finances, while Jupiter's ninth aspect into your sixth house has been expanding how you compete at work. It might have brought more clients your way or might have been helping you um, to compete really well against the competition. Now if that hasn't been happening for you and you're feeling actually no I've, I've been ch being challenged in all those areas it could be as well. So you're either succeeding so this does de depend on some of your natal placements but let's say for example it hasn't been like that for you. So Jupiter going through this area, these areas might have been bringing up blocks for you to clear. So you might have discovered that instead of expanding your career, it expands a little bit to a blockage. You know, instead of expanding your finances, it expands it to a bit of a blockage. Or, you know, how you compete or bring more clients. It, yeah, okay, it's expanding, but a little bit of blockage there. So that's actually Jupiter and Saturn's aspect on Jupiter is doing the job. So it's bringing up the blockages, which is a really good thing. That's actually what you want because you can see the blockage and recognize that that's not me. And then you be you and you transcend the blockage. You go beyond it. That is really the, the point of having a goal. It's not so much to achieve the goal from a spiritual point of view. It's that we want to see the blockages on the way there. That's the more interesting thing. So keep working with identifying what's not you and what really is me okay and what you are is you are an infinite being like the sun you're not the clouds you should shine like the sun and wherever you, the sun is in your chart you can take a look at that placement and learn more about your deep inner self on the 15th of september there is a new moon in leo what's your fall in next chapter happening in your second house Apologies, Cancer. I had to just record that sentence again. I messed it up really badly. Um, all right. Now, this is a great time to wish for big money or for something family related, for something your whole family can benefit from. And on the 29th of September, there is a full moon in Pisces, Uttra Bhadra Padanakshatra happening in your ninth house. So any limitations placed on you by some external authority, could be your bosses, could be relationship with father, but you know, any limitations that are coming from these areas, those could be more visible at this time on the 29th of September. Cancer, I am going to wish you well. Take care. Thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just checking the time. I think we're okay. My hair is a bit of a mess. I'll just fix that up. There we go. All right. Jupiter is going to be retrograde in Aries from the 5th of September to the end of December in your ninth house. Now Jupiter is a benefic energy for you and Jupiter has been expanding your authority, your career, your ability to study and or teach at this time. Now Jupiter's fifth aspect into your first house has been expanding your sense of self while Jupiter's ninth aspect into your fifth house has been expanding you creatively or has been expanding your relationship with your children. Basically blocks, any blocks that you have in any of these areas. So blockages in your authority, your career, your, and it's, it's blockages to do with 
that feeling of I'm in charge of my life. If you're not feeling that way, if you're feeling like, gosh, everything I try, it just, uh, I get a blockage. You know, if, you know, something happens and there's a blockage. Then Jupiter is actually doing its job because it's trying to expand you. The limit that it's coming to is Saturn is casting aspect onto Jupiter. So blockages might be coming up. And what all you have to do here is just recognize it. Just become aware of it. Just see it and be with it and just recognize, okay, also recognize that that's not me. You know, who you are at your core is you are like the sun. You know, you are infinite and loving and good and all those beautiful things. So recognize that that blockage, it's not you and let it be what it is. And if it, the blockage is coming from another person, let them be where they are. You know, you just go above. You just decide, okay, I just, I want to do things differently. And you do things differently. Now, on the 15th of September, there's a new moon in Leo, Uttra Falguni Nakshatra, in your first house. Leo, this is your new moon. And it's a great time to wish for any big change in your life that would take you to the next level. So definitely do that on the 15th of September. And then on the 29th of September, we have a full moon in Pisces, Uttarabhadrapada Nakshatra happening in your eighth house. So at this time, if there are any limitations placed on you by something hidden or unknown, that could become known to you on the 29th of September. Leo, I'm wishing you well. Thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is Virgo Ascendant, Virgo Moon or Virgo Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now Jupiter is going to be retrograde in Aries from the 5th of September to the end of December in your 8th house. And Jupiter, when he does his retrograde, he will be covering the same ground that we covered since 11 June to 5th September. Okay, so that portion of time, whatever you did there, that could be happening again. Now, where has Jupiter been working with you? Well, Jupiter's been working to expand your shared assets. He's been working to expand your occult skills, giving you new powers of intuition. Jupiter's fifth aspect into your 12th house has been expanding you spiritually, while Jupiter's ninth aspect into your fourth house has been expanding your home life or time at home or relationship with mother might be quite in focus. Now, if you look at all those areas, so shared assets, occult skills, intuition, expanding you spiritually, uh, expanding home life or relationship with mother, if you're finding that I haven't really been being expanded in any of those areas, what you might be ha seeing happen is that you expand to a blockage. Saturn's casting third aspect onto that Jupiter. So you expand a little bit, but then blockage. Ugh, expand a little bit blockage or just not moving at all kind of thing is Jupiter doing his job yes he is that's good okay you actually want to meet the block the blockage whatever it is because you want to see it for what it is you want to become aware of it you want to understand it and it's through that awareness and understanding you see more you understand more and you will ascend you will transcend it you will go beyond it okay so Jupiter has been doing his job, um, but it will help if, if, if you uh, see, see the blockage, see that, all right, I'm being blocked there. Work out a way around it, work out how to go up, transcend it. You, you can definitely do that. I've been having some blockages lately believe me and I sit down and I journal and I do all these things and and but sometimes because if my fixer is on overdrive it's like that's the blockage I need to just stop fixing things I need to just let it all go I need you to go for a walk and change the scene you know sometimes that's all that's needed it's usually simpler than what we think it is ego likes to complicate things all right now on the 15th of September there's a new moon in Leo, Uttra Falguni Nakshatra, happening in your 12th house. This is a great time to wish for new levels of intuition to open up to you. And on the 29th of September, we have a full moon in Pisces, Uttra Bhadrapada Nakshatra, happening in your 7th house. 
So any limitations in your relationship with the person you're committed to, your spouse, uh, if you're in a committed relationship, any limitations in that relationship will become obvious on that full moon, okay? And it's not like you have to do anything or say something to the other person or none of that. Just observe, just see what it is. It's just information coming in to help you. All right, Virgo, I want to thank you so much for stopping by. And we are now going to welcome Libra. Libra, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is Libra Ascendant, Libra Moon or Libra Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now we've got Jupiter retrograding in Aries from the 5th of September to the end of December in your seventh house. And if we look back at time, we'll see that the what Jupiter is going to cover from 5th December to end of December is going to be what we have already covered from 11 June to 5th September. So if you think back to that portion of time, we're going to cover that again. So Jupiter is actually a malefic energy for you. Is that a bad thing? I don't know if that alarm <laughs> just come, came up on the audio. I don't know. I don't know if it's the, it's probably the police. Let's face it. It's my neighborhood. It's the police. Uh, it, it's not an ambulance. It's the police. Um, if Jupiter, where are we? I just got distracted by that alarm that went off. Um, yeah, I think I said Jupiter's a malefic and then that alarm cranked up. Is that something to be worried about? No, it, it's not. Jupiter's a malefic energy, but it's not a bad thing. Jupiter will continue doing his expanding job. Um, but you, we'll, we'll get to that. There, there might be some blockages. We'll, we'll get to that. Uh, so let's take a look. What, what, what has Jupiter been expanding for you? So Jupiter's been expanding your relationship or ability to be in relationship with other people. Okay, that's your seventh house there. Um, yeah, so you might have been, there might be some blockages come up in your relationship uh, with significant other. Now Jupiter's fifth aspect, but let's just see what else Jupiter covers here first. So Jupiter's fifth aspect into your 11th house has been expanding how you take on opportunities. While Jupiter's ninth aspect into your third house has been expanding your courage. Okay, so this is all very much to do with, this is all social. And Jupiter has been wanting to expand these things, but in that expansion, some issues might come up or some blockages might come up because don't forget, Saturn is casting aspect onto Jupiter. So blockages are being brought up in your life by Jupiter's expansion here and Saturn's aspect in here as well. So what happens with a blockage is that it's part of our spiritual work actually, okay? Because in spiritual teachings, you know, especially my teacher, Lester Levinson, he explains that the point of having a goal isn't so much to achieve the goal, but it's to identify all the blockages on the way to the goal. And if you do that, if you understand them, you transcend. And it's that transcendence that we want. We want to keep going up. We want to keep, you know, having a bird's eye view rather than, rather than being in the maze and you keep coming up against a wall, you know, as you're trying to get out of the maze. Just imagine if you elevate and you go up and you don't need to deal, you don't need to bother with the maze. You can just go straight to your destination. Okay, so that's the point of transcending. That's why we want to do that. Um, so yeah, Libra, I do think that this is a time where some blockages in relationships might be coming up for you. Recognize that the other person isn't the problem. It's just the dynamic or pattern between you, that that person, that other person could be anyone. The blockage would be the same, okay? So that is something that you have to transcend. You know, that's that's how that works. On the 15th of September, there is a new moon in Leo Uttra Falguni Nakshatra happening in your 11th house. So this is a great time to wish for new soul tribe people to come into your life. And on the 29th of September, there is a full moon in Pisces Uttra Bhadrapada Nakshatra happening in your 6th house. So any limitations at work or in client relationships will also become apparent at this time. Libra. 
I'm wishing you well. Out of anyone who's going to equipped to handle all these relationship challenges, it's you, Libra. You're going to be great. So thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is a Scorpio ascendant, Scorpio moon or Scorpio sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now we've got Jupiter retrograding in Aries from the 5th of September to the end of December in your sixth house. So Jupiter is a benefic energy for you. Jupiter has been expanding your career, your client base, or your ability to compete with others. And that's since about sort of uh, mid to end of April this year. And so you're going to have a good year here with Jupiter. So you've got time with this energy. We're kind of just checking in. Uh, now Jupiter's fifth aspect into your 10th house has also been expanding your career. While Jupiter's ninth aspect into your second house has been expanding your finances, your savings. Now, if you're finding that, you know, career and money and all this kind of thing, you, you haven't been being expanded. You're probably like, well, no, I'm not being expanded. You know, maybe there are blockages coming up. Maybe you get expanded a little bit, but then boom, there's a block. Ugh. And then, you know, expand a little bit. Oh, there's another block. Like, it's like this. We've got Saturn's aspect onto Jupiter. So you might be having this thing where you're trying to expand, but there are these limitations or there are these blockages. Um, so the blockages have been brought up for you to clear and for you to transcend. And you can use a lot of spiritual techniques to do that. I won't cover those in, these video, in this video. And some of the other signs that I've been trying, but it's like, it's yeah, I'm eating up so much time, so I can't do too much of that. Um, the other thing I have to say here for you, Scorpio, is that at times you may have gone into debt uh, a little bit this year um, it might have been being it might be hard for you to um, save that is that is a possibility here so just do your best you can only do your best and um, you know there will be there will be better transits I mean there are of course natal placements and all sorts of things Vim Shore 3 Dasha there's a lot to look at but yeah you, you can get a feel a little bit for Jupiter here now on the 15th of September, there's a new moon in Leo, Uttra Falguni Nakshatra happening in your 10th house. So this is a great time to wish for next steps in career to be shown to you. And on the 29th of September, there is a full moon in Pisces, Uttra Bhadrapada Nakshatra happening in your 5th house. So limitations in your creativity might be visible at this time. You might be able to see what is holding you back. Uh, and with that information, you'll be able to transcend, you know, whatever's not working at this time. Scorpio, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is Sagittarius Ascendant, Sagittarius Moon or Sagittarius Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now we've got Jupiter retrograding in Aries from the 5th of September to the end of December in your fifth house. Jupiter is a neutral energy for you. Jupiter is your, well, if this is your ascendant lord, you know, it's your ascendant lord. If it's your moon lord, it's your moon lord or your sun lord. Uh, but Jupiter is a neutral and Jupiter has been expanding your relationship with your children or your creativity in the world, possibly your investments as well. Um, Jupiter's fifth aspect into your ninth house has been expanding your own personal authority. Perhaps you're taking your power back from the outside world and you're being more you. Now Jupiter's ninth aspect into your first house has been expanding your sense of self. So you might be finding that when it comes to your relationship with your children or your creativity or your investments or your sense of self, your authority, you might be feeling like, well, I'm not really expanding any of that. That could be that Jupiter expands a bit, but then it meets a blockage. And the blockage, you know, we've got Saturn casting aspect into Jupiter. Blockages might be happening at this time or limitations might be coming up. So really it's your job to see what the limitations are, to understand them, and in the understanding you'll transcend them. Now on the 15th of September, there is a new moon in Leo, Uttra Falguni Nakshatra happening in your ninth house. It's a great time to wish for a trip overseas. If you haven't been anywhere for a long time and you want to go somewhere, wish for that dream trip. Put a wish to the universe. 
and maybe that will happen soon. Now on the 29th of September there is a full moon in Pisces, Uttra Bhadra Pada Nakshatra happening in your fourth house. So limitations at home might also become especially visible at this time. And you know on the 29th of September with that information that, that might help you uh, to, to figure out how to transcend some of these other limitations if you are experiencing those. But Sagittarius, I want to thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Capricorn. Capricorn welcome, thank you so much for joining. So this is Capricorn Ascendant, Capricorn Moon or Capricorn Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now we've got Jupiter retrograding in Aries from the 5th of September to the end of December in your fourth house. Now Jupiter isn't the best energy for you, it's not the most compatible uh, for you Capricorn but Jupiter still is all about expansion. So what has it been expanding and where has it been doing that? So for you Jupiter has been expanding your focus at home or it might be bringing up uh, some issues at home. That is a possibility as well. Now Jupiter's fifth aspect into your eighth house has been expanding your ability to see hidden dynamics. That could also be making life at home more tricky, you're seeing a lot more, okay, so you're growing in awareness possibly quite rapidly actually Capricorn um, and I have had some Capricorn uh, clients come in who yeah they've had like some big awakenings happen during their Sati Sati time. So um, your ability to see hidden dynamics, you're seeing a lot more. Sometimes when we turn the lights on you can see more dirt kind of in a room. It's, it's a little bit like that. Um, so try not to take that personally and see that oh there's all this dirt. No, feel like you should feel, you could feel maybe you know more powerful that wow I see a lot more than I ever did. You know and, and, and so rather than let the dirt hurt you, feel good that you can see more. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I, I hope that, that that concept makes sense. Now Jupiter's ninth aspect into your twelfth house, yeah, has been expanding you spiritually. This is all quite huge. The other thing is that you might feel like you might feel stalled and that because this is fourth house, large body of water, oh, I, just, I just said large body of water, no Jupiter's not water, um, large body, large planetary body in a watery house, okay, that's what I meant to say. So yes you've got Sati Sati going on if you're a Capricorn moon, but if you're a Capricorn ascendant or sun, for all of you, this is a, a large planet in a watery house. So things might be very slow, Things might just not be happening. You might be trying a lot but it's just not happening. Um, you might be drained, you might be tired. There's a lot, yeah it's kind of like you're being slowed down massively or something like this. There's a lot going on on the other side. Okay so I want to reassure you that it might you might feel like gosh I'm not doing anything or nothing's happening or you, you know things could feel really terrible. Um, but I want you to know that on the other side your angelic team is working really 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 hard and doing a lot, changing everything so that you you are naturally going to walk into a wonderful future. That will happen when your Sati Sati period ends. So just keep hanging in there Capricorn, it's not long to go if you're a Capricorn moon. Uh, and, and if that applies to you if you're ascendant or sun it might do, it might do. Now 15th September we've got a new moon in Leo Uttra Falguni Nakshatra happening in your 8th house. It's a beautiful time to wish for healing uh, and wish that your angelic teams are supporting you extra at this time. I've got in brackets they are. Yeah they definitely are. I've got a real strong sense that I, I had to say this message to all you Capricorn people out there that look the divine is working double time for you at the moment and sometimes when things aren't happening here it means that they're very busy orchestrating and pulling strings on that other side. So hang in there. And you know the, the rewards that come from patience, 
are some of the biggest rewards on earth. So cultivate your patience at this time. Now on the 29th of September, we've got a full moon in Pisces Uttrabhadrapada, nakshatra happening in your third house. So limitations on your courage will be visible at this time. And that's really good, Capricorn, because you want to see that. You want to know what those limitations are because it's your courage that you need. Okay, your courage will see you through anything. So find the courage, look for the courage. You, somewhere within you, you have got infinite courage. Find that place. Capricorn, thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Aquarius. Aquarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Aquarius Ascendant, Aquarius Moon or Aquarius Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So now we've got Jupiter retrograde in Aries from the 5th of September to the end of December in your third house. And what you want to do is you want to see, so we're going to do a retrograde, right? So he's covering old ground. So the old ground that's being covered is from 11 June to 5th September. Okay. So now Jupiter isn't the best energy for you, Aquarius, but Jupiter is an expansion energy. And that, that's good, right? So Jupiter has been expanding your courage has been expanding your mind, has been expanding your ability to comprehend life, to take in life in, in many ways as well. Now Jupiter's fifth aspect into your seventh house has been expanding your ability to be a good partner in relationships, while Jupiter's ninth aspect into your eleventh house has been expanding how you bring in new opportunities. So life is being restructured in these areas. And it wouldn't surprise me, Aquarius, if you're one of those signs where it feels like you feel like you try things, but nothing's happening, or it's like you expand a little bit, but then there's a blockage. So that's okay. Just know that on that other side, I do believe your angelic teams, gods, guides, whoever you work with, ancestors, whoever you work with on that other side, they're working really hard to restructure life for you at this time. So don't worry if you're trying things that nothing's really happening. Um, there is this expansion thing going on, but you're kind of expanding and then meeting a blockage. We've got Saturn's third aspect onto Jupiter. So you, you expand a little bit, but oh, there's a blockage. There's a limitation. So just see the block. See the limitation as an illusion and see that I can transcend this. Okay, that's what you want to do at this time. Now on the 15th of September, there's a new moon in Leo, Uttra Falguni Nakshatra, happening in your seventh house. This is a great time to wish for a healing in your marriage, in your partnership. Uh, and if you're single, it's a great time to wish for that dream partner to come into your life. Believe in love, Aquarius. There is love out there. Okay. Uh, I'm sure there is. Now on the 29th of September, there is a full moon in Pisces, Uttra Bhadrapada Nakshatra, happening in your second house. So limitations on your ability to create big wealth in your life could be visible at this time. So take heed of that. Just see what those limitations are. There's extra moonlight here. You might be able to see why it's been difficult for you to expand or grow at this time. But keep hanging in there, Aquarius, especially if you're Aquarius moon. Hang in there. Okay. Uh, there's a lot being transformed and a lot of things are getting ready for you so that when it is reward time, you will be rewarded properly. All right, Aquarius, thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Pisces. I'm just checking the time. We're good for time. Pisces, welcome Pisces. This is Pisces Ascendant, Pisces Moon or Pisces Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now Jupiter is going to be retrograde in Aries from the 5th of September to the end of December in your second house. Jupiter is a benefic energy for you. It's a good, beautiful energy. Uh, I just want to say that when we're looking at the 5th of, December, 5th of September to the end of December, Jupiter is going to retrograde and cover the period of time that we already covered. So that's from 11 June to 5th September. We're going to cover that old ground again. So now, as I said, Jupiter is a benefic for you and has been expanding your finances Possibly Jupiter has been putting your focus on family life, on stability. Uh, Jupiter's fifth aspect into your sixth house has been expanding your career or your client, client base or your ability to compete. 
while Jupiter's ninth aspect into your 10th house has been expanding your career. What you do most of the time if you're not a career person or you know it been expanding your being seen in the world that you be seen in the world more life is being restructured in these areas now if you find that i expand a little bit but then there's a blockage there's a limitation that could be saturn's casting his aspect onto jupiter it's bringing up a blockage it's bringing up an illusion okay so just recognize that the blockage is an illusion and that you can transcend that okay and that you can you can just be you you are the sun the sun is somewhere in your chart and you are that sun and the sun is meant to just shine right uh, blocks limitations these are illusions these are clouds so just keep shining keep being you Pisces it's so important that's what the world wants now on the 15th of September there's a new moon in Leo Uttar Falguni Nakshatra happening in your sixth house so definitely wish for next steps in Korea to be shown to you and on the 29th of September there is a full moon in Pisces Uttra Bhadrapada Nakshatra happening in your first house so limitations on yourself in any area of life might become more visible to you at this time that could be really an incredible full moon Pisces because that is your full moon you could be closing out a major cycle that perhaps you started months or even years ago uh, on the 29th of September it's a it's a really big full moon for you so see if you can discover what are the limitations on you and just try to see that all limitations they are they are illusions uh, and sometimes that's difficult to see when we're right in the thick of it some of you Pisces you are just especially your Pisces moon you're starting your Sadi Sati and things might be difficult um, I do understand that so but just see if you can observe and because that's true meditation true meditation is increasing the watchfulness within you is increasing the observer the powers of observation within you it's not so much what you observe that's content that's not a big deal what you're wanting to enhance is your power of observation is your watchfulness so uh, your awareness you know there's lots of different words for it but see if you can work with that Pisces out of all the signs you are the best to uh, be brilliant at observing the all is one that is you Pisces you know you have a connection with that a very deep connection with that every strong Jupiterian does you know ninth house people do as well Sagittarians they've got a deep connection with the truth but yeah I want to thank you Pisces for tuning in and thank you to anyone who has watched the entire video uh, and please do leave a like below you're very welcome to let me know how you got on with the video keep your eyes peeled I'm going to do a blue moon special for the 31st of August I'm hoping to record that in the coming days probably in the next couple of weeks um, but yeah I want to thank you all so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you next time mm -hmm.